Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another stream. We've got another Zebra Central image breakdown for you today. I'm very excited to have Marcus Hertel with me today. Marcus, welcome to the stream. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, community. Hi. <laughs> yes. I'm excited to have this. I know a lot of people really love um, stylized characters, which you have a beautiful touch with stylized characters, but also what I'm super excited about with you in particular is how you do all your poly painting tomb shaded look, which you're going to be sharing with us today. So I'm excited to, sh to have the community see how you do this. It's going to be really exciting. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Marcus. I'm uh, Zeb I'm actually a graphic designer. I study graphic design and um, 15 years I'm working for uh, TV and uh, yeah, making animations and After Effects and stuff like that. And since four years I'm working on uh, in ZBrush. And yeah, I, I really love stylized stylized characters and uh, stylized stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a fan of what's there, and I would like to do that. And since four years right. I started to. To um, yeah, to see what is possible, and uh, happily I found out um, how I can bring my illustration style into the three D world. What wasn't possible before with other um, animation to, uh, modeling tools, three D yeah. programs. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to. Uh, this is kind of the what you will be covering today is this guy. Yeah, today is uh, the Iceman. I call it the Iceman. It's uh, it's a mesh up because I because I try to um, put two concept artists in one artwork for me. One is Ombre, one graffiti artist from Nuremberg, Germany. Very very cool stuff. I really love his work. And um, and Mitch Lee, Le um, which I started modeling in the 3D character workshop with Shane Olson. He's, he's the guy why I'm here and he helped me to discover the program, how it is, how, what to do and what possibilities you have because his style is the style I wanted to also like, uh, uh, how you say, adapt to my style and put my note on it. That's how I would say. That's how it is. Yeah. yeah. But your touch. My touch. Put the Marcus touch. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let me share your screen now. Yeah. Um, so people can see your ZBrush. And we can so, get in and uh, you share your techniques. And, yes. and as we go for everybody, again, I will do my best to send questions to Marcus as we're going here. So feel free in the chat to ask some questions as we go. And I will try to as many as I can send to Marcus's way. Okay. So here's, here you see uh, these two concepts on the, on the side here. Put, on, put them bigger. Whoa, it's not working. Oops. There you go. Whoa. Oh my God, it's happening here. Brr. No. Okay. So I had this this bust head here, and I had I, I've chosen these nice eyes way. This is from from Omba. One second, from Omba, really nice style. I really like the, the way he paints, the way he does the lines. Everything is really, it's really cool. And Mitch Leary, I thought it's not similar style, but it fits kind of in the same style. More, a little bit different, not so not graffiti style, um, and I and I wanted to put them together because I thought they fit somehow. So I did the bust and the wagon, and I didn't have any any body, so I uh, decided to model the body by my own, and I would like to share with you guys now how I modeled it. Yeah, so I go I go to the. I have to bring it back. Yes, you like to use Spotlight to have kind yes, of references yes, there yes, for you. Yes, yes, yes. I do the same thing. I like having those images. Spotlight is king. 
So here you see, see this is my sub my subgroup. Not nothing is combined yet, and I and I have here like an IMM brush, which is from Shane Oates from 3D Character Workshop, where I can use simple sh simple shape not shape simple objects to um, yeah to to put in place and then combine. For example. When I take this here, I'm gonna something. Um, for example, I just took a sphere here and I just pulled it off. And I took like a, I don't know what, what, what is it called, like a cone, but not spiky. Like yeah, a cone. Yeah. Cone. Just a yeah. pen sphere. And I just uh, also like um, cut it out, and now I have these two pieces. And uh, what I'm doing is that I'm increasing, uh, uh, increase the the poly count, raise the higher, check that everything is kind of like in place, symmetry is on. Yeah, for example, like this, um, and then I use the technique which is mesh by union this is german sorry uh, <laughs> um, and, now I, and, and 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 now i have i have these mesh these meshes combined somehow so i can i can also already like oops let's put this on. Oop. i could uh, I do it. Okay. I go, I go back and then I uh, uh, remesh by the remesh, and then I that looks weird. Something is wrong. So you start in pieces and then you start forming things together, Oops. and then you use the lot the boolean in essence. It's live booleans in that deformer. Yes. Um, to remesh by union, and then you uh, z remesh it to get some different topology yes and you're using you're using your polygroups right to help drive the yes. remeshing I yeah. don't know what's happening here oh, okay. I don't know. I'm getting it two there there's two pieces it looks like oh it's did some weird stuff okay no, that's right so now I can smooth them and bring them with move tool to get together and shape the way they fit into this guy here like that. And if I'm if I'm happy, I increase the poly count to each sub tool about uh, more than one million to to paint on it in a way that I can do my really uh, sharp creased lines, which you see in the, in the month before, I will show you later. Um, yeah, and uh, that's and uh, yeah, that's the way I start. Yeah, I, I think a key thing too that you did that maybe people didn't catch, when you still had it in pieces, you turned on that topological button and people might not be aware of that. So that's an important part that you did in your workflow as well um, when you still had the pieces. So he was turning on that button at the bottom there that he has in a custom UI. Uh, okay. um, yeah, that bottom one yeah. down there. <clears throat> yeah, that one. So if I put this on, I can just go on this. And if I don't turn on, I never move. I will move both of them. Yeah. So, yeah. and um, and to, to do the, to do the, what is it called uh, here? The rings around the... Uh, the well, not the collar. The uh, yeah, I'm going blank right now myself. The uh, <laughs> I'm going blank on it myself. So, and, uh, not the so collar. The collar's over here. For for this, for example, here, I would use a te technique that that I take the I don't know the the lasso tool. I would like oops. The cuff. Um, yes. Thank you, Lord. The cuff. Yes. Cuff. Yes, cuff. So let's take these. 
Oh, it's still there. Great. Um, So I will put this in a different poly group. Back, then you see I have it on both sides now. And I would then use the Z modeler to extrude, and I would extrude it as a non sided poly. Is it right? Is it right? Mm -hmm. And I would, sorry, and I would uh, put poly, all poly groups on because then I take both sides and Extrude it and I extrude it kind of close to it. Then I change to one sided poly, also all, and do it like this. Now it's now I have it and I would I would put it in a separate poly group and probably also um, what's the, um, put it on a different uh, uh, the unmasked parts will be uh, uh, sent to a new layer. I don't know what it is in English. You're splitting, yeah, you're splitting. Yes, splitting. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you're now using I, the mass, whatever's mass is staying as one subtool, the unmasked yes. portion is becoming a new yes. subtool. And, and so he's I, using split by mass yeah. or split by unmasked, yes, which is in subtool menu under split. Yeah, and then I would like position it. No, it's not, not correctly positioned. But um, then, then I also use much decreasing, like I would um, group by normals. Oh, that looks weird now. Because it's... This is the interface also from the 3D character workshop. I get, get used to it because it's great. <laughs> yeah, you've created um, your own custom UI. Yeah, so you see everything is like split in different poly groups. And so I have the opportunity to to uh, knit, is it knit? Knit everything. Crease it and then yeah, crease, yeah. crease, knit, knit, crease. Yeah. So so now if I if I turn turn up the the poly count, it still stays totally creased and clean. My 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 work is in general stylized clean. I'm try to avoid bumps. And try to have good topology by because I need it. If I don't have it very clean, the lines will not be very very um, sharp. So I have to think about that. And I always uh, remesh it, and then um, yeah, and then go up in the, in the poly counts. So I so I have the opportunity to paint straight lines, very very sharp. So if I don't like this, I also use my my. Um, my workflow, the Z modeler again, um, to, sorry, I have to go back here, erase, also use, I use much the, what is it, actually, um, like that, the bevel, bevel. The bevel. bevel, bevel, yeah. bevel to, the closer you get, the higher you, uh, when you when you raise the poly count, the um, less roundy will be the edge at the end. For example. Yeah, and you're setting yourself up for the painting that you know you're going to do. Yes, down your pipe exactly. Pipe, yeah, which yeah. you're setting yourself so, up. So, for. Now, so now, so now these two, I forgot the name already. <laughs> now they have just a poly count of 704, and for this piece here, which is not a head, which is not so detailed, or the 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 body part, like the upper body or the, the lower lower body, I would suggest the poly count about nah, three hundred thousand for just for these pieces to have also like creased lines on it. Normally a face. We have this here. Um, I 
takes up to 2000 2 million polygons to to have a look that is very 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 clean i will show you the end result here The little problem of the technique is not a problem, but the machine lags a little bit it's because this has 73 million and it's still working. <laughs> so if I go closer to his face, see that the lines are kind of. What is happening here? Oh, okay. See, everything is okay here. Not here is a polygon. It's okay, but but it's actually very, very um, yeah, um, edgy and smooth. And sometimes I use the soft paint, for example, like here, and most of the time the hard paint. And now I I, sh I, sh I will show you. But these are those are two paintbrushes you created for yourself, correct? This, this one, no. Yeah. No. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, don't, uh, I thought they were. So Shane something. looks like Shane. Yeah, that's from Shane. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shane Olson. Shane Olson. Eh? Then yeah, he, I have I have the, um, the brushes from him. You can download them from the site. Three D Character Workshop. If you want, um, so you, you see here that it's very, very, um, yeah, clean, almost clean, I would say. So um, I would like to show you, for example, how I painted. Mm, I painted the uh, the bow tie. Oh, yeah. So. It, here, unfortunately, is not uh, in symmetry anymore. So we'll concentrate on one side. Um, not so good right now here. Yeah, so you're not even using a shader for any of this. It's you're oh. using. Oh, Nothing but uh, poly paint to do all of this. For example, here I would grab grab uh, another color. Oops. And uh, from my from my point of view, to have very very sharp lines, always use lazy mouse because with lazy mouse you get these really really nice lines possible with your And after that, and you're using a tablet right now, right? Yes. Yes. I have to extend it. So I have to. This again. No, it's. You still have a, a select lasso selected, so it's selecting edge loops. Okay. Paint okay. now it's very very sharp. Paint. Take you know, take black, and then you can you see with pressure which lines you can. And, and you don't have an eraser, but you can just pick the color next to it and sharpen the stuff the way you want. So if you're not happy, this is my eraser tool. For example, then you can do like, so oh, what did I do? So I just grab, grab and see the, the, the color I would like to have. Do like that. Yeah, you're using the C key. The C key. Pick the color below. 
Yes. And it was V, you can, and I don't see that. So with V, you can change it. And if you paint, what I learned now is when you, when you push the Alt key while painting in black, you change to you change to the color, which is also in your palette. So now I have now I have the, this and this. So I just can paint it there. Okay. It's just demonstration purposes right now. For example, now. Yeah. Back. And I what I also do is I make landmarks on my on my model that I can follow. They are not too too heavy, but I can easily follow with the with my brush stroke. Something like that. You make sculptural landmarks, right? You make a little yes, 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 yes. Yeah, fun. Yeah, I don't I have some inside my models, but uh, they just help. They're just helping me to, to paint. Yeah, it's really a simple technique. But once you're done, what you're accomplishing is is really awesome. Seeing a painted tune version in essence. Yes, yes, I, a three D model. I don't, um, yeah, the ZBrush gives me the opportunity to do that. Oops. And that's really, 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 really cool. Yeah. Hey, but you see here how sharp you can go. And now that's a really high poly count for that little piece, which is you know, actually not <laughs> so important. Yeah, but the, that's actually the, the technique. I did all the stuff. Also, also I, I painted um, this this fake shadows. They are um, they are probably not um, prob a little bit problematic when you when you animate it. But I did uh, some animations with a character that it's there, but it's part of the style, so it doesn't bother too much. You know what I mean? Can you understand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So also this this here is not a texture. This I painted here inside. For oh, example. you painted that as well. Yeah. Everything. Also the here, for example, in the car to the car, or we could go later. <laughs> so um, what else? Actually, this guy I built it in a pose with symmetry always, of course, and then I pose it. And I pose it just to if I push it now. Then it will take too long. I, I push the T pose, mesh, and then I just mask arms and parts I want to move. Um, make the mask a little bit, fade the mask, and then turn it the way I want with the gizmo. Yeah? Yep. Um, Transpose Master, which is a plugin in Z Plug. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For example, here, here I can also show something I know the color is in the way now. Uh, sometimes I also use this transpose line, the old one, to to the mask. So yeah, here, you know, I faded the mask in out words. I don't know how to say that in English. So then I would like take the line. Um, alt, you can like change the other part, and in the middle, I push uh, the W, and then I can like bend it. Really nice to now you don't see what I did. It's really nice to do way of a better A pose, not too too static in that moment. 
Um, now my move. Uh, <laughs> let's move, 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 move. Yeah, I like to use the transbone line thing, but it's like a bone, like within the arm. Yes. And that's a good way to think about it if you never used this for posing. Then I, I, would, then I would like to put him back in place. Uh, you can also do it with a <laughs> move too. It was just, it was bad that I did this before. So go back to the gizmo range. Yeah, so the face is out. Yeah, so then I, then I would take this guy. When it's done, I would take it to, I hope it's working. Yes. Then, for example, here, I will go out of symmetry. Next pen, next puzzle. I would like check. I don't have a reference. Do I have a reference here? Oh, is that the one you used for your pose? Yes, I looked for reference images because I just had had the head from Mitch. So I just thought, okay, good, let's check. And then I found these funny pictures here. And it was like the wrong arm. Here you also have like uh, the possibility to switch off parts if they're in the way. You just want to have the arm. So you use both the gizmo and the transpose line when you're posing. Transpose line actually just for uh, bending stuff. I get I got used to this gizmo. It's really nice. Just no presentation, guys. Why is it so? You know, I would probably would put it, put the other arm. So what I can do in this case here, I take these arms, take this one, mask it, Control W, new poly group. Um, now I can, for example, put it. In yeah, place. you're holding the Control key and clicking on the poly group in Gizmo, which will mask. Every other poly group, but the one he clicked on. Yes, and yeah. so you can also easily like that. Um, mask, 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 mask. Just here. And make a little bit of uh, fading. Bring a little life in the head. Yes, don't make it too, don't look too static. It's too static. But it's not in A-Port anymore, so then the same with the legs. The legs are not dynamashed yet. Uh, uh, dynamashed, not uh, remeshed by Union and Z remeshed. So, yeah, I w for example, here I would just probably... Probably everything wrong. Yeah, now I mask everything, just not the legs. And I can uh, rotate it a little bit there. And uh, also move So it. when you're posing, are you usually 
doing it this stage when there's still separate meshes or and then doing the boolean and remeshing or do you usually remesh and then go to posing um actually i i, I remesh everything keep everything kind of low sometimes also i start painting but not fit i don't do the finished stuff because then the polygon is too high it can happen that something crashed or something did some some mistakes with too many sub, sub tools um so i yeah i do it in most of the time when i i don't know have in the medium stage i would say, yep. when I say I'm, I'm ready with the sculpt um it looks good and now i can try to pose and if, I, if it's wrong i can still go back and you, you, know, you also have the opportunity to to save the pose if you if you do any crap here with this uh, when you're inside now you can save the pose here and, and you push the pose mesh again then you can save that and you can load it back in if you did mistakes for example that's also yeah. sometimes what i'm what i'm using so you move into an asymmetry relatively early in the process not not super early but let's say in the middle of your process you're moving yeah I, I paint I, I i already painted much i would say yeah. oh yeah okay yeah, much but but then most of the time i try not to have the same fake shadow on one side and on the other side because when i painted it with an a pose with symmetry it looks a little bit weird so i try to do it one side and then we do the other side a little bit different or i pose it and then paint it it's more work but the result is most of the time better okay so i i would uh, like to stop here with this uh ice man and i would go to the yep. wagon um the wagon here the truck the truck this the the race this guy um this is also sub tools sub tools uh you see many sub tools and you go yeah through. you've got 42 sub tools total yes for this let's go through it's all there you see the meshes are really dense <laughs> Yeah, you got a range. Yeah, you got this across. It's twenty three million, which isn't bad for forty two sub tools. Like that one's only four point two. Yes, but this one is not so good. I I re did it again. Mm. Is it here? Mm. It's just one. Solo. solo. You have solo on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did it again. And um, yeah, for this, I started just with a cube and um, did everything, almost everything with the Z modeler tool, which I like also very much. And I have a short video, then you can yeah. see how I extrude stuff. And it's very fast, so I hope you guys can follow it. Um, yeah, you have a, this. So this is a time lapse of time him lapse. working with the modeler um, on how he made this wagon. Oops. Uh, and you, all this is Z modeler at this in this stage of blocking all your pieces out. So here you see, I'm doing the speaker, which is on the uh, our our left side. So it's just with a cube, putting inserting lines, extruding, um, uh, uh, what is it? I forgot the word again. Um, creasing the lines. Mm -hmm. Then here, this this is a good part. I will show you how. I, it, here, see here is everything like okay. It's really really blocky, but with the deformer tools of. Um, ZBrush, I changed it. Whoa, I changed it like that. Like bring, I don't know, bring more perspective because the concept also had this. I uh, check the concept and I go back and try to be as close as possible. And uh, it gives also more this toony look because this car I model is like a little bit 
blow it from the concept, not blow to me. I don't know what's the word in English. Um, yeah, so here you see also the, here I do the wheels in the Z modeler, and I pull out the parts of the screws, remesh by union, remesh again, so the topology is clean. Here you see that I crease the lines, not crease the lines, bevel the lines. Um, I, this, this model here, the second one, I really take care of that I, at the end I can print it out because now it's waterproof and possible to print. But the end result you see before was not. It was really hard to, to build the wagon itself with the Boolean interior, so I was struggling a little bit with the topology because the edges were not very sharp. But it uh, came out, I hope this it came out good. Here you yeah, see. So you're planning to 3D print this, so now you're building yes. this, rebuilding it for the purpose of having yeah. here you see it. printed. Here you see now where, where one second there, build this ice out of a cube, no, yeah, cylinder, sorry. I booleaned, here you see, I booleaned out the, these pieces. So these are these are just two cylinders. And this is actually also a cylinder, which I, um, uh, what is it called? I, extruder? No, it's not extruder. It's like flattened with the, flattened with the gizmo. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yep, you're um, using the scale holding control. Yes, yep. yeah, yep. exactly. exactly. Yep. So then, then I have a flat and a zero mesh it, then I have, then I make, um, uh, uh, Boolean remesh. Uh, yeah. um, then, then I, I think I, I extrude it because it's already flat. And the one side is still round. And at the end, uh, I, I, I take an IMM brush square, put it here and pull it out and here, just uh, put one line inside to make it like an um, like a triangle here. And when I smooth it, then it's like kind of uh, round. Then I remesh it and that's the result. See, uh, just straighten up stuff. Put it in place, like the concept. Put the glass in, change perspective. Yeah, so regardless if you're doing organic or hard surface, your workflows yeah. pretty much start really low, blocking yeah. out, use pieces, remesh by union to combine yes. them all, and then Z remesh to get clean topology, and then use Z modeler again if you want to, and then divide up. Yes, and I think that's yeah, yeah, reshape. Everything also this what is that called above the above the wheels the protection yeah and here you see deforming it in the deformer then it looks completely different Oop, there it is and then you have to rearrange stuff that is should not be deformed because you just take the the car itself. And the other one you hide, and then you deform. And put this this tuny horn in place. And then I imported stuff I already modeled, like the yeah, like the, the seats. seats, the seats, and the wheel, and the Scheibenwischer. I don't know what it's called. The bla blades, window blades. Oh, the uh, uh, yeah, wipers, windshield wipers. wipers the wipers, the windshield wipers. wipers. And so I see you put the steering wheel on the opposite side for us North American people. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't a concept like this. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, um, yeah, put everything together that at the end it's in the mesh somehow and I can prepare to print it. In parts, of course, not in one piece. I, first, I how, how big are you planning to print this? Um, 
Like, are you going to go really big or kind of more small? Okay. Like this. So, yeah. And you didn't see right now, I, I work most of the time on one side and then I mirror it on the other. So, yeah, I think now we And to reshape the wagon, yes. what deformer did you use? Ah, okay, yeah, okay. Let me can I show you. So, uh, I can go back now with the deformer. I can try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I used the deformer. Uh, hard. Uh, I think that's soft. deformer hard. Soft. Or soft. It's soft. soft okay. Because here you can tell how many divisions you want to subdivide. So, for example, here I remember, I think I had four. Uh, oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take, make a selection, invert it, then I know that this part here is going to be deformed. And then I can go back to solid state, maybe, maybe not. But, uh, Uh, kind of <laughs> up is no oh, up. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What you're using so to give your nice shape. That, that was the beginning, and then I shaped it like I saw in the content. This content. Actually, I have the concept always here, but now I have so many uh, pictures. I guess I don't need them. Anymore. So, like you can see here, you can make it bigger. Make it bigger. And I also I also take uh, the model in general. One second. Except what is that? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, and I try, I, I take the spotlight, mm -hmm. I lower the transparency to see through, um, put it in place. Then I, of course, always, always try, it's not always possible. Um, Okay. So you're and using this to verify your shape that you're doing compared to what's in the concept? Yes. And, uh, I don't know exactly, but it was kind of kind of good. <laughs> so up, I will make uh, here a bend because the the roof is also a little bit bended. You have to go down a little bit, and mm -hmm. yeah, for the wheels, for example. Um, see the wheels here, they're like uh, in, rotated a little bit, um, invert, inverse, it's called inverse. Inverted. Invert, yeah. So here now I have a problem, everything, if I select one, I cannot touch the other, so I, so I will make everything a polygroup. And I have more, more space. What's happening here? Where's the? Okay. okay, so I would like go to the first wheel, check that I'm in the middle, kind of, and check the concept here. So it's really like, like that. Then put the gizmo back, pull it out a little bit, and yeah, I think it's okay. Take the next wheel. Not to bend it, not the same way, of course, because we need some need some variation. It doesn't look the same. 
Yeah, on the other side, I don't know. Actually, you can mirror, but mirror, but I like just quick. Oh, that's not too much. Yeah, like this, and the last one. Out and turn it off. So you have a nice, <laughs> kind of nice variation in the in the wheels. Now they're not looking the same in the car. Even with perspective, look looks. I know it looks already tuny and it's not finished. Yeah, I would I would bevel the uh, yeah, bevel the, the headlights, the, headlights, mm -hmm. the wagon itself because it's too sharp right now. Um, what else would I do? Yeah, and uh, what you showed me, it's, I didn't know many. Maybe some people doesn't know it. I don't know. I think. Oh, the windows. The windows. Yeah, I don't know where my window here my window. Because now if I make a render, it looks, oh, it looks already transparent. <laughs> yeah, because you showed me that we have, where was Yeah, it? you want to turn off your polyframe too, though. Because if you if you turn it, this is for everybody, if you have polyframe on one subtool and then you render, we'll make all polyframe show on every single subtool when you render. Uh -huh. So that's what happened to him in case somebody didn't know. And it was in yep. Go ahead. display settings. Yeah. yeah. This one yeah. here. BPR transparent shading. If I turn this off and render it, it looks like that. You cannot see through. But if I turn it on and you can change the transparency, mm -hmm. you can get a great render in ZBrush to see how it looks. And it looks actually really good. Not, not now really good, but it's really, really cool. And um, yeah. It's nice that I know it for a future project if I have any windows to do. So yeah, that's that's it. Here we here we here modeled some uh, what is it uh, glass bottle stuff that is here on the on the bench which the guy yeah. is offering. And um, yeah, how are those they? were all started with Z Modeler, the it's the little everything, everything. accessories. Yeah, and also this. It, it's like, okay, let's see. Just, you, you, you saw it actually, but okay, I can show it. Just take a cylinder, put it here. Now it's a little bit, um, because the shape is round, it's, it shows down. I take this, I, I did before, I put it on another subtool. Everything transparent, so I have more control. And yeah, then I just shape it. So I go with the so I shaped it, pull it out. And if you're lazy, you do the you push control and like that, oh, not like that. You copy it with not mask like that. But in this case, it's not uh, so good. So I would take, oops, take another wrong angle. Right. But when I when I have it like this, it will show also this direction when I. When I, when I am M there, maybe not. So I take another cylinder and it doesn't work. <laughs> I think the shape is. The shape is not straight. It would be yeah, the straight, shape then, straight and then it would be correctly connects to the shape and uh, you can stretch it out or extrude it or something. But now you can just manage it. By my eye. Right, but you were also using the gizmo ability to add an edge loop extrusion by having part of the mesh masked, is what he was doing. And then uh, copying yeah. the control key. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you can just, oops, you can follow, follow the, in the back direction. Um, I could push all to go back there because I think it's somehow there, and then I just direction. That's just how I 
model to these stuff here. And they're a little bit like how you say, um, they're not really round, they're a little bit cur um, curvy, I don't know, not curvy, but, but not like a circle. And this stuff is also done like that. Take a, take a cube and insert it on the on the mesh itself. So you understand? Yeah, you're inserting a cube on the, yeah, on the make, wagon just yes. to start building something else. Yes, and uh, the end result with the painting is it this? No. No, it's wrong. And the end result is. Yeah, go up close to the headlights. Do they? Your hand painted. All don't, don't, don't look on the. <laughs> don't oh, still look <laughs> so look. So here, here you see how. Because. The, because. Um, what. Ombu is doing, he does this really, really cool shading with outlines, and the outlines are not, um, yeah, they, are, they have different sizes, thicknesses, and he, he, most, most of the art is, you can, you can pick, pick a color from the concept, like, for example, if I, if I the lights again. There's my brush. So I just would take the color here with go back to spotlight Z, take it. Right now it doesn't make sense, but oops, no, 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 no. So then you have with lazy mouse on you have this freedom to correct paint. All over now. Push C to pick the gray, and here to fix this, I just paint over it. For example, not here. What is that? Um, yeah, it, it, it's a key point, though, for everybody. When he grabbed the color from the image in Spotlight, you have to be in the edit. Yes, yes, it, but it, but. It's okay. You get used to it, and it's not bad. It's now I have the color C, so I can go here and pick yep. Z, Z, Z. But if you Z, and you can pick blue, and right. So that's the blue from the window of the image. Yes. So I make the lines. Correct with the gray. Take the blue. Oops. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, nice work to have good music and paint. <laughs> Get in a groove. Get lost yes. right in the art. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you see from far away it's really really crispy from close not too much because this, this wagon is too it's already four and a half and it's not sharp enough so i have to with the second wagon when i when i painted him i will um, take care that i will divide it somewhere that is not too high here do you see yeah i, I finished everything also i also like to to um, paint the lines because the concept says I should paint the lines. Yeah, you see. So there's also um, I, if I have the time and the muse, I paint it by myself. If not, there's also this possibility here in masking. I think I'm not sure right now. You can uh, say mask borders, and then you have also like the, the possibility that the, the, all the border, borders are, are masked, and you invert the mask. And then you put the color there, and then you have like a starting point. Then you can, um, on, on lines where you don't want to have the same uh, fall off, it's fall off thickness, you oh, can just yeah. adjust it with the color. Yeah. So sometimes you mask the edges. You use mask by edges, and then sometimes. you mask the edges sometimes. off, and then you inverse it, Yes. and then paint. Yes, because you have in the masking op options, you have 
possibility to uh, uh, widen the mask or not uh, with this cavity. I, I don't know in the English. Well, there's a mask by edge, so that might be. Uh, uh, this, what you're yeah. using. this, this. Yeah. So this this is also like a uh, um, stuff I'm using. And to painting this, I didn't paint that. I just I just made the mask like that. Tuck. Um, uh, what did I do? I sharpened the mask. I inverted the mask. I took my from my image here. I took the white because it's not white. And I just filled it. Boop. Now it's a little more color. And I did the same. Second one, it's not uh, oops, that sharpen it again and invert it. And this is gonna well, let's tell you so that's how I how I did the, the stripes here. Yeah. And then now it's uh, go back. And then the concept because concept is king, concept says there is a like. Because I like to draw that too. He has like this uh, gradient here. Mm -hmm. So I did the gradient. I took the other brush, put the intensity, I don't know, around 20, I don't know, and then widen the, widen the brush size and paint it in a, I don't know, green. Okay. Okay, I think they have to take not the intensity. There you go. So then you have to think about do you do this before painting the lines or not? Because not you have to repaint the lines. You understand? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you get that little highlight that he has yeah. in his original concept. So and um, yeah, I'm um, I'm using actually most of the time the zero measure. I don't use Sculptures Pro yet. But I won't, would like to try, but too much to discover. And um, I use sometimes I use Dynamesh, for example, for this thing here. I use Dynamesh. So, and then I'll see remesh it again. And then you see remesh it. Because I started here with a, with a ball, just pull it out, uh, control outside to reshape the mesh. And then I just uh, put this down, and here I grabbed it. Pulled it, zero meshed it, and put it on a higher, higher subdivision level to paint on it like that. So it actually looks like that. <laughs> yeah. So that's here you see also like the edges. And I also use use spotlight, spotlight projection. To right? project. Yeah. To project, yeah. Yeah, put this logo because it's his wagon. Um, yeah, uh, and I use use this technique with the projection also for the eyes. I can start a new start a new tool, and I can show you. Right. Ah. Eyes already here. I picked the color of the white. I, okay, for the for the eyes. Normally, this this uh, Mitch, uh, this Iceman guy here has eyes that are like they are done. Okay, I can show it. Uh, it? Yeah. The eyes from him, they are like done with out of cubes. Put like a smarty there, and then paint it, paint it uh, a white ball inside. Like make this. Like, it's already seven hundred thousand. <laughs> okay, and then I take the white. I want to have. In eyes is not good because then when I paint like this, this um, I what is it called the reflection. eye reflection. The reflection. They should not be pointed like like this. They should be pointed like uh, like that. So I would paint. Uh, yeah. 
This is just now crappy, but that's how I would do it. Um, but I'm, I'm working different. I'm using, I don't know, Illustrator, and then I do my eyes. I have an eye library based on the concept I'm doing. I check if something similar is there. Here, I now took this one, because I did an Illustrator. Then I uh, go back to my to my eyeball. Yeah, it's here. I, oops. And Huh? It's not a poly mesh. It's not poly. Ah, yeah. Ah, thanks. <laughs> okay. So we'll go. Okay, two million. That's better than my picture here. Yeah, so, so. so you divide it up to get some topology. Yeah, I have no here. I have no two million. Two million. Yeah. Actually, let's see. So is this this is an eye you made? This is an eye I made. Yeah. You okay, make an illustrator. Yeah. Yeah. You see now it's not very well. Uh, um, not very well has not a good high resolution, resolution. Yeah, it's not but, a high resolution but for purpose oh, let me check one thing um there mirror it oh, i can mirror it no i have to mirror it and then what is it, what is it doing? Because okay, there's also a problem if you mirror stuff and this L symmetry is on, then it doesn't work. It it works, but it it, it does always, local symmetry. Yeah, it's local world symmetry. symmetry. And that's the problem yeah. that I have right now. So what's working? I have to mirror it. I have to yes. Back to the. Something transparent now. I up. I transparency up. Check the color Z for the eye. Now it's white, it's not so good, but it. and then I then I um can you have to um what do you have to do? You have to uh put projection where is it yeah spotlight projection spotlight projection on and um now i have to think <laughs> um, Nina, do you turn transparent? Do you turn some opacity change in, yes, in the image? Yeah, yeah, it was just the spotlight. Yeah, then you have to put the not unhappiness that it goes with you. Uh, I, I want. Uh, yeah, the pin. The pin. The yeah. pin is. Uh, I don't want. I take this spotlight radius. Mm -hmm. Open it full. Then you see my image here. And if I if I move the model. It will go off where I want to paint it so I can position it. Um, but what I, uh, what I wanted to. Yeah, he's turned up the spotlight radius, which is part of what spotlight's, why it's called what it is. And it's yeah. going to make the images transparent, but where your brush goes becomes, you can start seeing your image in a little opaque. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you have this yeah. on, that's your pin. Yeah. yeah. It would, you can put the image wherever you want. Yeah, it's it attaches to your brush in essence now. So That's I don't want this. I want this. I want this in full circle. The green circle is up to zero, so it's full. So now I can um, start painting. Uh, in, in this case, lazy mouse off. Oops, too small. And I paint my image. On both eyes. Oh, do you see? He looks weird. And again, just straight. Because perspective is on. That's not good. So take that, take that again, smaller a little bit. 
I have two painted eyes. But now we have the problem, what I told you before, that the reflection is wrong. So always do that just for reference that, that you see where your eye, old eye was. I use this technique then I put it in place. Symmetry is off and I paint it again on the other side. And then you should have two beautiful eyes. And right, so you have that same reflection on yes, both eyes. Because if not, I think it looks weird. And now, because uh, of course I took uh, not the best resolution, you can also know if you are, you can, because you have a very, very high resolution um, uh, sphere right now, you can also, uh, don't forget lazy mouse to paint. And make it very, okay, here's a gradient. But you can paint it really, really nice. Changes. So that for this better actually to do it again in Illustrator sharpness wise, but you can do some changes here that you okay I have a gradient there in Illustrator so it looks a little bit different. Yeah, and if you want to something change here you see it's it's working and yeah. it's just the way i i do my eyes and so close you won't go to to the rendering i guess so uh, and then you see it looks uh, this looks also good but can be better it's just the way i'm, I'm doing eyes yeah and uh these were my these were my techniques. Um, I talked about the characters. I have some more. You want to show the turtle too at some point? The turtle, yes, the turtle. Where's the turtle? Um, the turtle is here. So you see everything painted, um, not mirrored. <laughs> Side. Yeah, so you're getting all the techniques we've been talking you've been talking about today. It's just you layering your paint yes. to I get this show, tune I show, look. I can show the layers. And so what what you don't see, I don't paint. Makes sense, right? So yeah, it looks, it looks weird. Here's his his belt around the chest. Too, I don't know why. Is the knuckle on the belt in the back? His his. The eyebrows. I look like the eyebrow. Yeah. That doesn't work. Here you see better. Yes. Yeah. Arm. Hats. Hats. And the shoes. Yes. Yeah, it, once you've got it all together, it's just you see, you see the, awesome. It was the turtle eye. Oh, you there's see, the eye. Yeah, you see it exactly. I made some mistakes again. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that way. And you have a you have a render too. You wanted to share of this. Too. Yes, I have also. I have also uh, a time lapse. Time lapse of the painting. Where is it? Wait a moment. And, uh, so here you see what I showed shortly with more time and accuracy. And yeah, I pick I picked the color with the modeler from the reference. Then I paint. Then I change. Look at the model. See, okay, there I have to go around the corner. Also, with this color it looks weird. Then I redo it. And yeah, because this is not this is not my my. Uh, after I did this painting uh, on lots of models, I think every time you you do you do your way of texturing or modeling, 
you get better. And I think um, this one is my actually my advanced, uh, most advanced uh, poly painting project. Um, yeah, and yeah, it looks like you lay down also it's obviously some big color changes, and then you go back and layer another color and go back and layer yes, another color. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah because because I I, can, I I try to avoid fading, so I have to fade with this cell shading. I know cell shading. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. So, so, yeah. so take the, the picture, the reference of uh, reference. Yeah, I'll show you the reference. The reference was from Pinterest. I don't know the artist. I think it's Rahu. I don't know. This picture was so low res that in the pixely picture, when you color pick, you always never get the same color. So if you go one millimeter far away, it's another color. And so you can paint with this and you think, damn, it's not the same color. But when you can do like this, you can try to make a color in between the two colors with the color you just picked because it's in the same palette you actually uh, work in. You know, like if you, if you want to have another green spot and you don't get the one, you get another one because it's a really pixelated uh, picture. So yeah, it's almost done. Um, this is just giving it some artistic love painting it yeah that's, that's i really i really i love it i love this way of painting yeah it's awesome i, I can't say enough about it. like that's why i was saying i was excited for people to see your technique for this painting at the end it looks like that yeah oh i like this from the back this from the front with some blur camera, camera yep blur. some depth of field yes and um hopefully we get this printed out one day but i have to do some change we already tried but to put this stuff together correctly it's it's not so easy yeah because i never printed out in resin just with I have this PLA and PLA you can forget that. <laughs> I would say <laughs> looks weird. And um, yeah, let's we will try this in resin in, in the future. I hope soon. Are you are you gonna try and print it in color though, since you're doing so much poly painting, or are you just going to repaint by hand for your prints? Um, first let's look look how it looks printed without printed. color. You just want to see first, yeah. And uh, then I I think to paint this by hand is I don't know how long it will take. So I think just uh, print it out and maybe green and I don't know. Actually, just keep it the way it is in the resin. I think it's true. Fine for we, there are there are printers that will print in color for you. So we yeah, you can take you can take your poly paint and print it in color. Okay, I uh, didn't know, did not know that. <laughs> yeah. okay, but this must be uh, drop, drop me another email and we'll discuss a sidebar. Okay. <laughs> okay, next next and last for today. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show you oops. My last project. Where is it? I don't know where it is. Here. Yeah. Uh, it's also from Mombo. And this is your most recent piece that you've worked on, right? Yes. This is, and, um, I have a timetable for this. Also, everything painted. Just some landmarks, maybe you can see it here. In the... Not really. <laughs> so, yeah. Check the dot here. You can have landmarks in the jacket. Folds, crappy topology. See here. Right. This is the point you were talking about. You like little sculptural marks of where you want to put wrinkles, yes, but then you're yeah. really painting in your wrinkles. Yes. Yes. You're not really. There's not a lot of sculpt on on the wrinkled part, right? No. It's just as I, I work with move, pinch. Pinch much. Uh, what else? 
sometimes less fill and sometimes inflate no clay buildup but i have it here but i don't use it and uh, the model i think that's right and now the knife curve for cutting stuff and the gizmo to translate and scale and yeah yeah and imm brushes and uh, yeah ah, and i forgot something but okay that's I use also this topology brush to paint. For example, this the the, the Iceman has this this how is it called Schutz, skirt skirt. Oh, the apron. Yeah. So I take I take the body, enlarge it a little bit. Yeah. Then I know that I, that I have geometry on. I can paint with on the topology. Then I paint the lines with topology, and then like um, yeah, uh, make it a mesh. Like okay, it's weird to. I should first before I show you something else. Uh, here's the render of this guy. I really like it and the turntable. Good. Uh, yeah, what I what I want to say is to go back to the slow guy. Where is it? Yeah. Here, this one. Yes, the apron. Yeah. Yeah. But how I did it was just now I show it on the one piece here in front. I did this. I have symmetry on. Oh, it's actually not good. We have symmetry on, always start in the middle. Shook. This, 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 and this. And then he connects it. And probably do one more here, maybe one more here. And then I can erase this crappy stuff with all, I think with alt. No? Yeah, with alt. Yeah, alt and, and uh, Yeah, and now to have this the perfect, uh, perfect mesh on this. I forgot the name. It's apron. Apron. Yep. Uh, then I don't do this. Then I just just paint, uh, not paint, drag on the surface, and it will extract the stuff I want depending on the brush size I am on. Mm -hmm. Now it's very high. So here's now what would I do? What I do I would auto group so I have it easier. <laughs> Pick this guy, it's picked already, then I can just push it down. Or oh, it's masked. Or I where is that? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I would just put it no, I don't put it <laughs> like that and Yeah, you're just using the topology brush to make yeah, and then I would then I would end end and bevel and bevel all maybe and try to do group by normals again because then i have everything again that has more than 45 degrees has an own poly group poly group um and what else and then i would for example here bevel bevel all the edges Okay, it's again. I don't know why it's changed again to fifteen. Right? You're doing a poly group by by normals. By normals, and what then, then, doing? I, and then, then I'm increasing the poly groups. Exactly. Then I have this sharp sharp stuff that I want. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes, and uh, go back to uh, to our. Not this, what is it? Here? Yeah. Yeah. Back to our final image, final model image. So big. Okay. <laughs> came, out, came out awesome. And I love his expression. And I love the pose you picked with the little yeah. popsicle in the hand. And it uh, was. 77 million and a half problems here because it's upload 
on. So uh, <laughs> just no. Why? Ah, okay. So, um, so this is the view you see in polypainted in, in ZBrush, and the render is this one. And here I, I'm, I use a strange glass shader. And you, you can also see that uh, some parts are not <laughs> dense of the wagon, but it's OK. Um, yeah, and the, and the, and the um, turntable. Oh, you did turntable of it as well? Yeah, the, yeah. the first one. So that's actually it for today. And All I hope, right. I hope I could show a little bit of my workflow and um, yeah, hope that some people try to try to do do it. Try to practice this way. Maybe it's cool. Maybe they like it. I will go on in that because it's. I think it's my my. Uh, preferred way of texturing. This is great. Thanks, ZBrush. Yeah. Well, I want to share, too, just so people, again, this is his post on ZBrush Central, um, showing the renders as well. And then this is where you can contact Marcus. Here's his username. It's just his name, <laughs> Marcus Hartle. And then at the bottom here, we can share the links um, for your other places that people can contact you. So I'm going to put these in the in the chat. So people also have this information as well for you. Um, so Mark, thank you, man, for uh, being a part of this and sharing your poly painting technique and how you do your models. It's you have a beautiful touch, like your final work. And we definitely need to talk about if you're going to 3D print them, all that love in the poly paint, we got to get that printed out in color. So there's definitely ways to do that. So, so and also for those of you watching this that enjoyed um, being with Marcus, we have another stream like this coming up. So we have Manuel Jordan also going to be doing a, a ZBrush, ZBrush Central image breakdown with us. He actually is the winner of the last contest that Raphael Grissetti did. So you'll want to uh, come by and see Manuel. He's going to break down this piece with us. So it's another stream coming up for you all. Again, these are constant streams happening every Tuesday. Uh, also this week, so you're aware of it, we have a stream coming up on Thursday, which is going to have myself, um, Anna Carolina, who's a streamer on ZBrush Live, and Ian Robinson, who is now a member of the ZBrush team. So the three of us are going to be an Ask the Trainer uh, stream where you're going to come and just ask us questions, and we're just going to answer questions. In essence, we're just going to, start firing stuff at you all and some tips and techniques and then have the ability to ask us questions and we'll answer it in a uh, stream form. So there are some great streams coming up this week. Again, this one is this Thursday and then we have manuals coming up as well. So uh, Marcus, thank you so much for you, doing Paul. this. It was a pleasure. <laughs> It was a lot of fun and uh, love seeing your technique with the painting. Like I said, it's, it's just paint, painting with some love. And time. <laughs> yeah. So I, again, everybody, I want to thank you all for tuning in and joining us. Please continue to come by um, and join us on all of our streams. This is also always live with a lot of ZBrush artists. I know Marcus brought up Shane Olson. He streams on this channel. I believe Shane, it's every Monday, right? Every Monday at 10 in the morning Pacific. I don't remember without my head. I think, I know it's Monday. Pretty sure it's Monday. Shane's in here right now. So, hey, Shane. <laughs> yeah, by all means, please keep coming or join us for these other streams that we have coming up where we're breaking down artist work. So, thank you again, Marcus. It was a pleasure having you. Really enjoyed seeing your techniques. Um, there, Shane's putting in his time Mondays at 11. I was close, Mondays at 11. So this has been another ZBrush Central image breakdown. I'm Paul Gabriel with ZBrush, and we've got Marcus Hurdle. So thank you again, everybody, and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Ciao. Thanks for joining. Yeah.